I can go one national park or one state park over to where the terrain is exactly the same, granite rock to granite rock. But energy signatures are different. Geospatial data is different. Uh, magnetic anomalies are different. How does that happen? All right, we're back. So you have been the star of a series on History Channel that we've talked about, Beyond Skinwalker Ranch. And I know we got into that on episode 150 based on the first season and what you were doing and some of your surprise there. But I've always enjoyed your thoughts on the UFO phenomenon because I think you're a realist about it. You're more data driven. You've expressed that you believe there's a, a there's almost a statistical impossibility that there is not intelligent life out there. It's just a question of are the things we're seeing reported as intelligent life here actually what they're reported as, which I think is really fair because there's also been a lot of speculation, righteously so, I think by a lot of people, that the things we're seeing are products of super advanced intelligence-related technology, not always necessarily our own, but yeah, certainly DARPA or CIA at the front end of that. So having done season one, what are you, what do you want? Are you on, We've, working on season three? Season two is already, is already live and I think ra is, uh, is aired. Yep. And season three scheduled. Okay. So number one, has your opinion changed or moved at all on that? And number two, what are you guys what are you guys gonna be focused on and looking forward to in season three? So I I really appreciate where you're where you're going with this. And I also really appreciate that you are so accurate and specific in the words that you use to describe my relationship with the phenomenon. Because what I have seen personally, is that there is some strange shit that happens that doesn't have explanation. It doesn't have explanation in like normal civilian terms. It doesn't have explanation. It defies explanation in known science and known scientific terms. Uh, equipment gives results that don't make sense according to how the equipment is supposed to work. I mean, and, and then of course, on top of that, there's a whole world of secrets that we don't have access to. But even and even as we take this to my network of FBI, CIA, uh, NSA, police, even as we expand and ask questions in my own personal network, the feedback that continuously comes back is that they are also stumped. So mm. there really is something strange. There really is some kind of phenomenon that is consistent, is measurable, is witnessable, and is happening in our planet's atmosphere, right? And sometimes that phenomenon happens underground. Sometimes that phenomenon happens on the surface. Sometimes that phenomenon happens in the sky. Now, after being through two seasons of investigating high strangeness with the Skinwalker team and, and the Beyond Skinwalker effort, I am more convinced than ever that there is something happening. I am not any more convinced that it is alien in nature. But I am more and more confident that it does defy science as we understand science today, right? Energy signatures, um, transient uh, physical evidence, like somehow you can see gaps in GPS data, gaps in uh, geospatial data, gaps in energy returns. Like it's the strangest thing, man. And, and nobody can explain it. Experts in their field can't explain it. Technical experts with the equipment can't explain it. Physicists, ast uh, astrophysicists, like scientists can't explain it, but it happens and it's consistent, not everywhere, but in certain places. So why the hell is it that when I'm in a, in a strange ranch in Southern Colorado, I see the same weird shit that I see in uh, the mountains of Nevada, but I don't see either of like those two things are consistent. But then when I go to someplace in Tennessee, we don't see shit. Mm. How does that happen? How is it, you know, how is it that I, I can go one, one city over, I can go one national park or one state park over to where the terrain is exactly the same granite rock to granite rock, but energy signatures are different. Geospatial data is different. Uh, magnetic anomalies are different. How does that happen? Right. And why does that happen? I don't, I don't think that it's alien. The proof that I'm seeing is not that it's alien, but the proof that I'm seeing is sure as hell that it is fucking weird. It's fascinating. And it shows the untapped advantages that a weapon system could get 
if it could figure out this science. And I'm, mm. I gave you a lot right there. I don't yeah. know if it, if it all made sense. Because no, in, in my head, I'm reliving the investigation. And season two goes through a lot of that. And anybody who watches season two on History Channel or streams it beyond Skinwalker Ranch, you're going to see exactly what I'm saying. There's so much strange shit that happens in our in our country that we don't even understand that defies the laws of science as we understand them, the laws of physics as we understand them. And it stumps not just me as a CIA officer, but a whole range of experts that I've talked to. Gun to your head... Would you say it's super advanced, like DARPA technology? Uh, I don't know if I would give DARPA the credit, but I would say that that the sixty forty of what we're seeing is advanced tech is either advanced technology or this was really crazy, old super old technology that we found a way to do better, balloons, um, sea drones unpowered uh, passive devices, right? That kind of stuff. What do you make of all the patterns though of people who have around the world who have claimed to have witnessed something? And, and again, you know, you hear a lot of people now, they'll come up, they'll say, I'm an experiencer. And maybe somebody is, but the vast percentage of people is probably something different. But when you look at say the patterns that James Fox has been on the show has created with the history of it since the 1940s, be it from China, Russia, United States, Australia, Africa, South America, all over the map, where they re report the similar things, small creatures, similar beady eyes, similar colors, craft described in often the same ways, a form of telepathy that happens for people that have encounters of the third kind. That's the right term, right, Alessi? It's oh fourth kind, right? Yeah. Where it's like everything all together. You know, I guess there's a possibility. Well, there's certainly a possibility. Some people are lying. But when you see all these different people from so many different places who before the internet, when these things are happening, had no ability to communicate mm -hmm. with each other, what do you make of that? So there's something very real there. There's there's two things that I've been able to actually see for myself and measure for myself. First, experiencers are having real experiences. From their point of view with their five sensory organs, right, their eyes, their nose, their ears, et cetera, they're having a very real experience. But all a sensory organ is is a series of electrical patterns to the brain. So just like we can, we can simulate, what, if you touch freezing cold water on a hot day, the first sensation you actually have when you stick your finger into the cold water is a burning sensation because that's how the body yes. interprets the sensation, right. right? Same thing happens if it's a freezing cold day and a lukewarm uh, pool of water, as soon as you touch it, it feels super hot. That's just an electrical impulse. So it's not that you're, what you see is really what you see or what you hear is really what you hear. It's that your brain is interpreting electrical signals and translates those electrical signals into sensory perception. So what's wild mm. to me is a lot of the experiencers that I've spoken to have had very real experiences but that doesn't necessarily mean that what they experienced actually happened to them the way that they experienced it. They may have been touching cold water on a hot day and what they experienced was burning. So that's what's so fascinating to me because one of the things that we have absolutely been able to measure is that in areas where highly strange phenomena have happened, energy readings are all over the map. Electrical energy readings, magnetic energy readings, gravitational uh, energy readings all over the place. So we really could, like, for all intents and purposes, you could stand in one place and you don't smell anything and it feels like a 70 degree day. And then you stand six feet in a different place and now all of a sudden you smell oranges and it feels like a 90 degree day, mm. right? Like that's the the impact of energy on your body and on your brain and how your brain interprets events. So when you think about true experiencers, if they're just temporarily co-located in an area where either a extraterrestrial phenomenon happened or a very terrestrial phenomenon happened with high energy readings, the experience could be the same. See what I'm saying? Yes, I understand what you're saying. I think that there's still a little bit of an open-ended argument as to the exact how, – how many data points across – how many years and how many places, like just statistically from like an anomaly perspective, for sure, how much that lines up. And it makes you think because, you know, people's heads go to 
oh, it, it, are these different governments trying to put out misinformation and stuff like that? And that's that's a fair question to ask. But then you look at the people who are coming out and and some of them smell government-y and other people don't, you well, know? It can be both. That's what I'm mm. saying. It can absolutely be both. It's not an either-or argument, right? It can be terrestrial and natural and it can be government related because what has the government always done when 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 it was like the 1920s the government found where nature created forests and then it started cutting down trees it went to the place where nature created gold reserves and gold ore and then it started mining operations so why would we not think that if the if the government found a vortex of energy that could have uh, uh, benefit to aeronautical aviation technology or weapons technology or free energy, right? Mm. Uh, yep. Whatever, fusion, fission, whatever. Yep. If they were to find one of those locations, wouldn't they go there? Wouldn't they also try to cover it up? Wouldn't it also be a place that has its own measurable differences against every place else? And wouldn't people in the surrounding area also have experiences that were related to the incredible amount of energy or the, or the unique geology of that location. Okay. So I am more and more convinced that there's a terrestrial explanation for what most experiencers see. But here's the thing that's so interesting, especially if there's a terrestrial explanation for it, intelligent life from another planet would most likely identify those anomalies here when they did a scan of our planet. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.